It's a beautiful day in the deep south, and we have a game today with deep meaning between Florida Tech and Valdosta State. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Dolman alongside the championship coach in the Arena League, Darren Arbett. So good to have you with us for this matchup today. You know, Darren, last week this game wasn't even on the national radar in terms of importance until Florida Tech knocked off top-ranked West Georgia, and that changed everything. And now this game means everything to a lot of teams. It really did because now Florida Tech, with a win here, can get into the playoffs, or maybe with a loss they can get in. Valdosta, they need to win also. If they don't win, they're going to be sitting around tomorrow worrying if they got into the playoffs also. Yeah, don't leave your postseason plans in the hands of a committee. Now, Florida Tech loves to have the ball in the hands of quarterback Mark Cato. Last year, he was the conference's freshman of the year offensively. He has lived up to the promise and potential this year as a sophomore. He really has. I like him. He can keep plays going with his feet. He's a great competitor. He needs to be good with his eyes today because defensively, they're going to roll strong. They're going to roll weak. They're going to make him read. He can make all the throws. That's what I like about him, Bill. And that offensive line has been protecting well for him. On this six-game winning streak, he's been playing really well. Valdosta State's a team that likes to get the lead and hold on to the lead by putting the ball in the hands of its running backs. And the best, especially right now, is Cedric O'Neal. His career is winding down, and he's playing the best football during his time as a Blazer. 13 touchdowns, 881 yards. He's strong between the tackles. He gets his shoulder square and runs downhill. He can run you over. I like what he does in the secondary. He can make a move and make you miss. He's not going to put on the blinkers or the brakes. He's going to step on the gas pedal and try to run you over. The chemistry with the offensive line is great. They love him. They play hard for him. So look for him to play well today for his football team. Hilliard looking left and finally looking right. He's got some pressure. That's Sheffield giving chase. He flips the ball back to Chris Anderson, who picks up the first down. He needed the 42. He takes it inside the 35-yard line to the 33-yard line. And Anderson, first of all, Hilliard, look at the blocking right now. The protection's there. They're coming out. Hilliard throws the ball. Receiver Anderson is coming back to the ball. That's what you teach your receivers. Come back to the football when your quarterback is in trouble. Anderson did that. The other thing I like that he did, Bill, he caught the football. He was aware of where the first down was and just ran there and got that first down. It's another third down conversion. Now to the final two minutes of the first half. Cedric O'Neill straight up the middle. Got away from the first wave of tacklers and takes it to the 30-yard line. That's a gain of three on the play, maybe four. And that's what he does for you. He's going to make that first wave miss because he's so strong and runs with so much power. O'Neill, the reigning Gulf South Conference Player of the Week after that 190-yard performance last week. Here's Hilliard to the open receiver, and again, it's Anderson. Anderson has a knack for running his routes, getting to where he's supposed to be, and then going where he needs to be to help out. Yeah, Anderson, all he did, he sat in the hole there, but look at the protection. And even number 66, Adams, was able to take his guy inside, and Hilliard making things happen with his feet. And once again, Anderson, Johnny on the spot, finding that hole, coming back to the ball, catching it for a first now. Stapleton got to Hilliard and a timeout is called by Valdosta State with 59 Hilliard seconds Hilliard. remaining in the first half. Yeah, Wynn was pulling up in that hole right there, but Stapleton played off that block and made a big time tackle or Hilliard might have been off to the races and got into the end zone. Now if you're Florida Tech, You've played efficiently offensively to the point that you have the lead. Your defense has been adequate, although they've had some issues on third down. It's special teams that have let you down in terms of field position and putting Valdosta State in good territory. When we talk about going into the locker room and making adjustments, how do you make adjustments to your special teams so that they don't let you down and let down the other two units who have been operating fairly well? You know, you go to your kicker and the head coach Englehart went up to him and gave him the business. And then what did you see? You saw all his teammates and the assistant coaches going over and patting him on the head because they know you're going to need him in the second half. You're going to have to go in and give him more confidence. Hey, just relax. Know it's a big game. Hey, we've all made mistakes. Just get the ball off like you've been doing the whole season for us. You'll be fine. And here their first crack is third down and 10 and a long 10. 
Quick throw for Schroeder. Shank, the big receiver, has it on the slant and has the first down. That's a matchup we'll watch all day. He is every bit 6'4", more than 200 pounds. Nice protection up front, starts off with that, and then you have Shank, 6'4", 208-pound junior, just running a slant route on the outside. You can see Schroeder right there getting that ball out there quick, that quick release. That's what coaches like to see. Shank, big target, caught the ball, moved the chains. He could be a matchup problem today for Quincy. 6'4", there in the secondary. No one standing more than six feet tall. Now here's Derek Hammond's first touch of the day, and he backpedals a little bit after the true freshman linebacker, Clayton Cole, pulls him down. We just saw from Joey Shank, he is our Coke Impact player here for the Truman Bulldogs, brought to you by Coke Industries. We are Coke. Of those numbers, a career-best 157 yards last week on 13 receptions. Just a big target, and like you said, Thank with. You. Harkins number 12 at 5'7 and Brown at 5'10. That's a mismatch size-wise at Shank being 6'4. Second down here from the 25. Come back to Shank on a knee. Makes the catch in front of Atakeem Brown. A 5'10 redshirt sophomore corner sets up another third down. I like the throw by Schroeder there because what he did, he threw that ball low and away where only his receiver could catch it or it was going to be incomplete. Didn't give the defensive player a chance or an opportunity to step in front of that ball. Two receptions already for Shank on this drive. He's top 25 at the Division II level with about six and a half per game. 3rd down and short. They need the 18. They'll rush just four. Here comes the pressure from the backside. And open over the middle. There's Nebo. And Nebo breaks free. It's a touchdown for the Bulldogs. And that's what I was talking about, is that speed and that quickness as he has. He went down. He sat in a hole right there. And you saw Schroeder. Great protection. Rolling to the right. Threw the ball to Nebo. Made someone miss. Beat him to that pylon. Touchdown, Bulldogs. You got some bling right there. You've won three of those as a head coach. How do you get your squad ready these final three games for that Spokane playoff matchup? We're going to have to be peaking in the playoffs. Right now, the guys are playing great together. They're believing in each other, and they're working hard. And you got a uh, – what did you tell your team? I mean, you worked so long all season to get to that point, 15 games at this point, clinch the division, clinch a playoff berth. What did you tell your squad in the locker room afterwards? We got to be all in, and that's our model this year. We're all in. We put our rocks in the bucket. Everybody believes – We'll, that we can win the game every week and we work hard. And you hear so much so often coaches say you got to get better each week. What does that actually mean at this juncture of the season? You know, individual matchups. And we're looking at some guys, they need to step up and do certain things offensively, defensively, and special teams for us to get better. And they understand that. They say the most important position in all of sports is the quarterback. You have a little bit of an issue right now. Nathan Stanley playing very well, but your original starter, Russ Mikna, nursing a broken collarbone. What can you tell us about his recovery timeline right now? You know, Russ hopes he can throw the ball next week and then after that be able to practice. And uh, I think he would like to play against Iowa. And Iowa's your regular season finale. So let's say he does, you know, accomplish the checklist, so to speak. Like you said, throwing this week, practicing next week, and then maybe playing in that regular season finale against Iowa. How do you as a coach approach this with Nathan Stanley playing so well, but Russ coming back, if he plays well, how do you approach that quarterback situation in terms of a starter? You know, Nate Stanley is doing a great job right now. The team is following him. He's putting in a lot of work, preparing every week. And we've been winning football games. And then you look at Russ. In my mind, Russ is one of the great ones to play the game. And it's a great situation to be in. And it'll work itself out. How, how can it work itself out? I mean, obviously, you, this is your 14th season. You've had, you've had other coaching stints as well. You've been around the game a long time. How does this work itself out? An old coach always told me, you know, you have to play each game because you, a lot of things can happen, practice, game time, off the field. Just let it all happen, and then when that moment comes, make a decision. And you'll just know as a coach, you think? Absolutely. All right, well, you mentioned on ESPN, too. You saw the standings in that conference. What's your quick analysis there? I'm a fan of that conference. I mean, how can you not like the Cleveland Gladiators? My old roommate, Stevie Tun, he's a coach there. They're exciting, winning games at the end. And then Pittsburgh. They've retooled everything there. Ron James, a great coach, has them playing well. And then Tampa, you have Philadelphia. Both those teams can beat any team in the Arena League.